Hello and welcome back to the David67 Celtic News YouTube channel. This morning's video going to be a post-match review of the Celtic 2-0 win over Hearts yesterday afternoon. Uh, as part of the video, we're going to have a uh, looking at the near misses, the goals, uh, the VAR decisions that gave Celtic a penalty, took a penalty away from Hearts and also disallowed uh, Celtic's third goal in added time. Also, uh, my own player ratings, a wee uh, discussion of the stats um, for yesterday's game. Before we do crack on with the video, just a wee quick suggestion, reminder, encouragement. If you are new to the channel and not yet subscribed, please do click that subscriber button. Keep the numbers pushing past the 1000 level. If you do like the video, please do click that like button. It does help with YouTube analytics to spread the videos and the channel to more and more people. And comment section open for pleasant, polite debating points, thoughts, opinions, with regards to this video, the topics raised, and any other Celtic issues. In the end, a comfortable win for Celtic. Keeps their 100% record top of the table level on points with Aberdeen, but well ahead on goal difference. Also, Casper uh, Schmeichel and the defence kept their fifth clean sheet, which equals a record at the club, stretching back to 1906, so equals a record that's 118 years old. And it does show that Schmeichel has been a good upgrade at goalkeeper. And I have to say I was a wee bit surprised when when I saw the lineup for yesterday's game against Hearts, because I did expect Trusty and Valley to start at left centre back and left back to get them uh, ready for the Champions League game on Wednesday. But I think, um, given the way that Rogers selected this team, it's pretty clear he's going to go into um, the game against Slova and Bratislava on Wednesday with the starting 11, assuming that nobody picked up any knocks or injuries during the match or picks up any knocks or injuries in training prior to the game on Wednesday. So at this point in the video, I originally popped in some video highlights of uh, the goals and the VAR decisions and some of the near misses. However, upon getting it nearly uploaded, uh, YouTube said there was copyrighted video within the video and so I have had to remove the uh, uh, video highlights from BBC Sports Scenes coverage last night. And so I have done this little bridging section. And so in the second half of the video, uh, we'll crack on to discuss uh, the near misses, the goals, the players, the ratings and the stats. Apologies for being unable to pop in the video highlights as I often do. However, for one reason or another, YouTube is saying that there is a copyrighted, uh, copyright infringement issue. Uh, and so best to remove that section. Apologies if that spoils the usual sort of video. Game stats for yesterday's 2-0 win over Hearts. Celtic had 71% of the possession to 29 for Hearts. Shots were 18 to 7 for Celtic. Uh, on target, 6 to 3. Off target, 7 to 2, all in favour of Celtic. With Celtic having five shots blocked and Hearts two shots blocked. And both goalies made three saves. Touches in the box was 35 to 13 in favour of Celtic. Corners, 5 to 3. And aerial duels one were thirteen to eight for Celtic. So pretty much in every single category, Celtic were the better team. It was in the end a pretty dominant performance. Key moments of the game, uh, obviously, was the penalty that was given against Liam Scales for handball, um, which 
quite clearly for me on VAR replays showed that the ball hit him uh, on the shoulder above the t-shirt line and so isn't a penalty kick and so quite rightly VAR eventually decided to advise the referee to have a look at it again and the referee correctly uh, overturned his initial decision was actually a bit surprised that the referee got it wrong in the first place because he was to be fair to him in the perfect position he had a completely clear view of the ball hitting scales second half again quite surprised that the cross by Kuhn which was clearly handballed by Penrice the uh, Hearts defender using both hands well away from his body really quite surprised that the referee and the assistant referee on that side failed to give the uh, decision however uh, happily VAR interceded and a very quick review by the referee showed that Ben Rice's hands were both well away from his body um, they blocked the ball from Kuhn's cross into the box clearly as a penalty and the penalty very nicely put away by Arnie Engels looked incredibly cool and calm and collected as he stepped up and um, a wee bit similar to his hero Kevin De Bruyne his fellow Belgian international tucked away the penalty um, with 100% certainty and it was very nice to see Luke McCowan coming on late in the game thought he actually had a very good game for a player playing so many so few minutes at the end of the game uh, he looked like a second Kyle McGregor uh, in the defensive third into the midfield third and then breaking into the final third uh, nice little move between Luis Palma and James Forrest setting up Luke McCown on the edge of the box for a nice shot into the bottom right hand corner although I do feel that K Craig Gordon um, probably feels he could have got more on the ball to push it past the post um, as it wasn't actually fully into his bottom right hand corner we of course had a goal disallowed uh, in added time from Adam Ida again nice move out to Lewis Palma nice ball into Greg Taylor overlapping into the box uh, crosses to uh, Adam Ida uh, who had a very smart finish VAR however uh, picked up on the fact that Luis Palma um, whilst trying to get himself back on side had been briefly offside before he went back on side although watching the game live at full speed um, it didn't look like Palma was uh, offside but um, VAR computer lines shows he was so he was offside but Celtic uh, played well but not as well as they have in most games this season took a bit of time to get going uh, which isn't that unusual after the international break uh, my player ratings um, for yesterday's game Kasper Schmeichel uh, for me got an 8 out of 10 lots of good saves good command of his box uh, looks very assured in the box. 8 out of 10 for Kasper Schmeichel. I've given both Alsa Johnson and Greg Taylor 7.5. Again, looked nice and solid in defence. Um, both Taylor and Johnson got forward. Um, Taylor uh, set up the third goal that was disallowed. I thought he broke nicely into the box. Um, Johnson, his usual dependable self on the right. Um, there was one... I think mistake by uh, Johnson where he gave away the ball but otherwise was a pretty much uh, good to very good performance so seven and a half for the two fullbacks given eight for Cameron Carter Vickers I thought he looked very assured controlled calm in defense kept control of his striker in terms of hearts having two up front with Vargas and Shankland um, so eight out of ten for Carter Vickers given seven for Liam Scales I thought he did lose his man on a few occasions which was part of the reason why there was the shoulder ball block by Scales in the box that was initially given as a penalty in that he lost his man it kind of was flailing about a wee bit uh, trying to regain his uh, the player he was supposed to be marking at the corner a couple of other times he did uh, let his mark, marked player get free uh, which was also the case for uh, 
the half chance late in the game where Schmeichel made a good save. So 7 out of 10 for uh, Liam Scales. In midfield, I've gone for 7s for Rio Atati and Callum McGregor. They both played fine. I uh, don't think they quite had as good a games as they have earlier in the season against Kilmarnock and St Mirren and Hibs um, and Rangers. Um, Callum McGregor was busy, but not quite so controlling and in charge of things as he has been in the earlier games. Rio Tati lost a good touch. He did have a nice shot on goal, um, but didn't quite have the dominant performance that he has had so much this season. So sevens for him. Eight and a half for my man of the match, Arnie Engels. He played all over uh, the pitch for Celtic. He shows great ability to break into the box. He had a lovely left-footed shot that hit off the post and bounced across the goal. Um, he has really good ability to track back, re-win the ball, always available for a pass. Uh, did step forward really nicely to calmly put away the penalty, put us one nothing up, and so for me, uh, eight and a half for Arne Engels in Man of the Match. A wee bit disappointed in both Kyogo and Dyson Maida. Uh, Dyson Maida, not quite the force down the left wing. Um, one or two nice passes, one or two nice runs by Maida, but not quite uh, at his best. Similarly, Kyogo did get himself lots of chances. Seemed to be very much playing right on the line of being offside onside and did miss this. Uh, Few chances, particularly the one where he was clean through and managed to put the ball past Craig Gordon's uh, post, which was a wee bit disappointing. So uh, six and a half for um, Dyson Maida and Kyogo, and I've given a seven for Nicholas Kuhn. I uh, thought he did look nice and busy down his wing. Um, not quite at his best as he has been in several games this season. Did get a, a good chance to score at the back post, which was well saved by Craig Gordon, and um, did set up Celtic on a few occasions, um, and a few times just wish that he had been a wee bit more greedy rather than looking for the difficult pass to his teammates. Um, but so a good performance by Nicholas Kuhn, but not uh, the best for him this season. For the subs, don't think Lewis Palmer had quite enough time really to put his marker on the match. Did have some nice passes, was involved with the second goal, um, was part of the setup for the third goal, which was disallowed. James Forrest, I've given uh, seven for, much the same as uh, Lewis Palmer. Some nice moves, some nice runs, some nice passes, and was involved in the setup for the second goal. Paul Bernardo, a bit disappointed, didn't really seem to, seem to me to get involved in the game. He, uh, of all those subs, had the most game time, uh, didn't really put his marker down, and so I think he'll be on the bench again on Wednesday. Luke McCown, I was very impressed, I've given him seven and a half, but he did look very uh, busy, very active, um, and I was that uh, very impressed, and a nice, calm, well-hit shot into the bottom corner to get him his first Celtic goal on his second match. So seven and a half for him. And I've gone with a six for Adam Ida. Again, for me, a wee bit quiet up front. Um, did put away his chance very well for the goal that was disallowed. But it does look a wee bit like Adam Ida is still struggling to get himself up to full match sharpness. However, his uh, good finish from the a chance created by Palmer and Taylor uh, is a good sign for the future. Um, and I do wonder whether what Adam Ida needs after the game against Bratislava, where I'm sure Kyogo will start, is a couple of starts where he gets a good hour or more on the pitch um, to get his full match sharpness. And I think that's something that Rogers should probably look to do uh, once we're through the first Champions League match on Wednesday. We'd be delighted to see what you feel yourself in terms of your own player ratings. Are there any that you feel I've got wrong? Are there any players you think maybe I've been a bit generous with? Uh, some that you think I should have got an extra half point or point? Uh, so 
do pop those into the comment section. So that finishes things off for today's post-match review of the Celtic Hearts win. Celtic stay top of the table. It looked like we got through the game injury-free, and so all the focus now will move on to Bratislava on Wednesday in our first Champions League game under this new format. To finish off, just a wee polite encouragement, reminder, suggestion. If you are new to the channel and not yet subscribed, please do click that subscribe button. If you like the video, please do click the like button. And so, until the next video, a goodbye and hail, hail.